today on the spot. We check out the latest downloads this week on PlayStation Network, then do a duo of demos with Bitrip Runner and Prince of Persia. We also talk to the new Madden cover athlete and give away some cool trivia prizes for StarCraft fans. Today on the spot. Hello, everybody, and welcome to the latest episode of Today on the Spot for Saturday, April 24th, 2010. I'm your host, Sean McInnes. Joining me today is John Carlo Veronini, editor at large. At large and in charge. Both things true, both things accurate. Now, John Carlo, I don't know if you've watched like the last few episodes of the show, but Homer's been out of town. He hasn't been able to to be in the studio and record his typical voiceover that uh, starts at the beginning of each show. And we've heard some, from some of the viewers that they're not big fans of the, uh, the fill-in that we've had doing it. Yeah, our beautiful, smart, intelligent viewers do not <laughs> like that intro at all. Which, you know, I can understand. So maybe to help alleviate the problem, maybe we can see if either one of us is, uh, you know, capable of doing the intro. That so what do you think? What do you think about us doing a Today on the Spot intro contest right here, right now? I'm all for it. Let's do it. All right, I'm going to mix it up. I'm going to throw in my own twist on it. <clears throat> on this episode of The Spot. Yeah, pretty good. I, I, I can dig it, but I'm going to try and class it up a little bit. Okay. <clears throat> today on the Spot. I like it. They got the whole opera thing going on. Yeah. Uh, you win. You should do that intro on every single episode Sweet. from now on. Let's do it. <laughs> uh, don't worry, guys. I promise the rest of the show is much better than those terrible intros we did just now. Uh, we've got a whole lot of demos and interviews for you, and even some StarCraft II goodies to give to give away at the end of the show. But as always, we're going to start off with the latest headlines. Hey everybody, it's your GameSpot News update for Saturday, April 24th. I'm Tor Thorson. In its earnings report yesterday, Microsoft conceded that Xbox 360 sales were slowing somewhat, with sales dropping 12% to 1.5 million in the January-March quarter. The slowdown came despite Microsoft trying to sweeten the deal with a $300 Xbox 360 Elite bundle that packed in Forza Motorsport 3 and Halo 3 ODST. However, the Xbox 360's first quarter sales were enough to push the platform past 40 million consoles sold worldwide. The figure puts it behind the Wii, which had sold 67 million units as of the end of last year, but still ahead of the 33.5 million PlayStation 3s sold as of December 31st, 2009. But remember though, those aren't apples to apples comparisons. The Xbox 360 came out in November 2005, a full year ahead of its competitors' debuts in November 2006. In less welcome news, a good many of our friends at Sega of America are out of work. Yesterday, the Sonic publisher confirmed that it has laid off 73 employees from its London and San Francisco offices as part of a restructuring effort for its Western operations. The cuts represent about 10% of Sega West, the company's non-Japanese division. The San Francisco office will become home to a new digital focus business, while the London office will shoulder more marketing duties. A spokesman for Sega said the reorganization, quote, reflects both the changing face of the global video games market and a need to improve efficiencies within the operation. And that's one fancy way to say, you're fired. Good luck, fellas. Well, that's it, your GameSpot News update for Saturday, April 24th. For more headlines, head on over to news.gamespot.com. That'll catch you up on what's happening in the news. Now to see what's new this week on PlayStation Network. This week on the PlayStation Network. In the downloadable games, we find Hyperboloid HD. Hyperboloid HD is a next-gen brick-breaking game that features two visually stunning game worlds complete with animated levels and realistic physics. As you break apart these complex creations, you'll enjoy the outrageous new power-ups and will be surprised by the game's smooth controls. Amazing art and animation, along with the bass-heavy techno soundtrack, will immerse you in the psychedelic world of Hyperboloid HD. Pick up Hyperboloid HD for $4.99. Next up, we find Puzzle Chronicles. Enter the dark and savage lands of the Ashuran Empire as you battle to avenge the atrocities the Empire brought upon you tribesmen. On your heroic quest to topple the Empire, you will fight fierce beasts and battle hardened warriors in this new puzzle RPG hybrid game. Featuring active puzzle combat mechanics, deep story, and robust character development, Puzzle Chronicles will bring you into the next era of puzzle RPGs. Puzzle Chronicles is yours for $9.99. Sloshing its way up next is Secret of Monkey Island Special Edition. Relive the hilarious swashbuckling misadventures of the wannabe pirate Guybrush Thripwood all in HD as he attempts to become the most infamous pirate in the Caribbean. Featuring a reimagined contemporary art style, complete voiceover by the members of the original Monkey Island franchise cast, a remastered musical score, 
plus scene for scene hot swap to transition between special edition and classic modes at any time. Grab Monkey Island Special Edition for just $9.99. And closing out downloadable games is Afterburner Climax. The classic arcade game Afterburner has now returned for a new generation of gamers. Afterburner Climax is fast and frantic action, putting you in the cockpit of the world's fastest fighter planes. Dodge planes, rockets, and bullets while trying to target multiple on-screen enemy aircraft. Take to the air and blaze through a branching storyline in over 20 stages. Afterburner Climax is yours for $9.99. Be sure to grab the multiplayer demo for Lost Planet 2. Join up to 15 other players in the multiplayer demo for the Turbulent Jungle Map. Choose from either Elimination or post grab modes and use the all-new VSs, weapons, and support items for the campaign mode. Grab your weapon and get into the heat of the battle with players from all over the world. And finally, in PS1 Classics, take control of a superbike and race your way to the top in XS Moto. Pick this classic up for $5.99 and play it on your PS3 or download it directly to your PSP. That's all the time we have for you this week, but be sure to check back next time for another This Week on the PlayStation Network. All right, so that was this week on PlayStation Network. Now, Giancarlo, it's time to check out a new game called Bet Trip Runner. It's obviously the latest entry in the Bit Trip series, but it's a little bit different from before. It's not like a shoot 'em up y type game. It's a, it's a platformer. Yeah, I saw some screenshots and some video of it earlier. It's kind of retro looking, kind of kind of a cool style. Right? Yeah, it's still very uh, eight bit like those other Bit Trip games. It's still got like the cool chip tune soundtrack going on there, but it's a uh, it's a it's quite a different genre from what those guys have attempted in the past, and it looked pretty interesting. That sounds pretty cool, so uh, let's take it to Sean and Chris's daily demo of Bit Trip Runner. Well, everybody, it's that moment you've been waiting for. It's time for our demo of Bit Trip Runner. I'm joined by Chris Waters, who's here to guide us through the experience. Chris, yes, I, am. I know what a Bit Trip is. I'm pretty sure I know what a runner is, okay. but what, what happens when you put them together? We're going to show you, Sean. And you know, Bit Trip is all about the retro stylings, uh, the 8 bit look, but, you know, very vibrant. And the music, of course, the beat. These are rhythm games, you know, above anything else. And there's a guy who runs in it. Okay. It's Bit Trip's take on a platformer. So here huh. we go. We're jumping into one of the early levels here. And uh, in the early going, you sort of learn. Uh, you, you learn your repertoire of moves. So yeah. on this level, you're learning slide. There okay. you see a jump. Uh, you don't control the motion, the speed this guy runs at. He runs at a constant speed and he always runs. Okay. So really you're hitting jump and you're hitting slide and you're trying to pick up those the gold bars and the pluses that sort of um, elevate the, the musical style. You can hear with each time he grabs that uh, the red cross, the music gets more complex like Bit Trip has in the past. Now the, uh, the Bit Trip series has sort of been known for being just like unabashedly hardcore and sort of like, you know, that old uh, NES style of games that were hard because because why the hell else not, you know, they're, they're tough games. Yeah. Is it the same thing here? Yes. So what you're seeing here is one of the early levels, like I said, that's that's the I learned how to slide levels. Uh, okay. Now we're going to move on to, well, actually, we're going to move on to the bonus round which is gold gobbling, and <laughs> you'll see how that plays out. But yeah, it definitely, once you get all your, all your repertoire set, mm -hmm. it gets tougher. Like, you know, Bit Trip uh, games before it, it's all about the music and kept getting in the rhythm. And so, you know, hitting the jumps in sequence, you're actually creating, you're following, not only following the rhythm, but you're creating music. Mm -hmm. And this is the new spring ability. When you oh, hit those, okay. these little yellow pad or pink pads. Uh, you sort of get a little more air, and then of course, all this stuff becomes layered on top of each other. And there are UFOs and like weird skeletons. Super creepy skeletons, and yeah. So it, it, it's got some of those similar themes as uh, previous Bit Trip games. You've got the, uh, the whole, you know, retro 8-bit aesthetic. You've got, um, you know, high level challenge, but you know, simple basic controls. Pretty simple. I mean, you're holding the Wii Remote sideways, and you know, two is jump, one is uh, kick. We haven't seen any kicking yet, but that's coming. Sure. Uh, and then you're basically jumping, sliding, kicking, and that's it. Actually, before you learn all those buttons, mm -hmm. the the idle buttons that you then ma maps to later make make a tone, and so you can sort of add your own little musical layer on there if you're like, I'm fine with the jump, and you can add a little extra beats in there. Uh, so now we're going to jump into one of the later levels. So you can start to see there are pits, places you got to duck, you got to jump, all the while trying to get uh, those pluses to expand. It's, it uh, increases your points because, mm -hmm. like previous Bit Trip games, uh, 
it's all about grabbing the high score. Right. Uh, and as you can see, I just totally ate it. And there's me eating it again. That one I did on purpose to demonstrate when you, when you die, <laughs> right, you just go right purpose. back to the beginning. Sure, that was on purpose. Yeah, exactly. All right. So now I'll show you quickly just show you a crazy one. This is as far as I managed to get in uh, my short play time with the game. And you start to see just how all the elements come together and it gets a little crazy. All right, let's have a look at this, uh, this craziness you speak of. So you got jump, kick, oh. jump again. The red ones you have to jump over. These you have to the blue, purple ones you got to slide under, and that's something you learn on your own. A lot of memoriz memorization, I take it. Yes, the memorization definitely helps, but reflexes also help. In that case, I was trying to think red jump, you know, but <laughs> that, my thumbs failed me. Well, I'm sure you'll give it some more time, and you'll eventually get to be good at this. Game. I really appreciate your confidence, Sean, <laughs> especially in light of that little incident right there. All right, Chris. Well, thank you very much for showing off Bit Trip Runner. My but, pleasure. Uh, one last question for you: Do you know if the game is still We Were Only, and have they? Announced a release date yet? Pretty sure it's still We Were Only. Release date is TBA. All right, that release date is a very firm, very set in stone to be announced. All right, on with the rest of the show. Now it's time to keep our double header of daily demos going. That was a bit of a tongue twister with a look at Prince of Persia The Forgotten Sands, courtesy of Kevin and Ryan. Guys, take it away. <laughs> Hey, what's up, everybody? Ryan McDonald sliding into the desk, and I've got Kevin Van Ord here, who has brought us an awesome game out. I've been a fan of the Prince of Persia series. Hearing that this one falls between the first and the second, I'm excited. This is Prince of Persia The Forgotten Sands, is that correct? Absolutely. This is, um, well, I guess it would be the fourth game in the Sands of Time series, but um, it's sort of a reboot. It takes place between the first and the second game. So the prince that we know and love so much is, um, he's on his way back, you know, after adventures. Um, and he's, uh, what's happening in the game is he, uh, he's gone to visit his brother and his, his brother's, um, you know, palace and kingdom. And things just aren't going as well as he'd hoped. Uh -huh. um, so this is the very beginning of the game. So I just kind of thought I'd show you the very beginning and, uh, and right. see what uh, our prince is up to. Let's jump in and, and check it out. Now, uh, as we look at the game here, it obviously looks like it's inspired by Everything that we've known and seen. Any uh, any gameplay differences up front? Absolutely. Um, it's very similar to the to the uh, the Sands of Time games. Um, in fact, what what you'll find in just a second. I mean, the combat's a little bit different. It's it's very mashy. Um, but what we'll find in a second is that it takes a lot of cues from the first Prince of Persia game. Um, he definitely looks like he has like the warrior within outfit going on more than he absolutely. Does the... But this is pre emo prince. Yeah. I mean, I think it's worth it. Now, of course, he can oh, run along walls. Nice. Yeah. The controls are very similar to the the Sands of Time games. Now, in combat, you'll see some uh, some animations like that. You'll see me throw dudes over walls. Um, you can uh, do a regular X attack like this, or if I want, when I come up across to a, some more enemies, I'll do uh, a little bit of a knockdown. So if you've played. Um, the first Prince of Persia game, uh, Sands of Time. When I say first Prince of Persia game, that's the one I mean right. um, in, this, in this context. Um, you'll notice that this is actually quite similar. You've got a castle under siege, mm -hmm. and um, you're trying to find a, a way to get out of this particular situation. You've got to have some kind of story vehicle to make stuff fall in front Absolutely. of you. Absolutely. Right? <laughs> but this is also one of those things where, uh, where uh, it's, it's sort of fan service. It certainly is pretty. I'll give it that. It Absolutely. Really good. Well, it is based um, just like um, the Prince of Persia game from uh, a couple years back. Um, it is based on the Assassin's Creed engine. Now, that is definitely a good engine. Now, now, just coincidence has like zero to do with the movie, as far as you know, Jake. As far on. as I know, it has absolutely nothing to do with the movie. In fact, I think there was some kind of controversy over whether they'd be using. Uh, a Jake Gyllenhaal model oh, really? for this, and uh, it's it doesn't look like Jake Gyllenhaal to me, so I don't think that worked out. They said no. Nah. Now I can uh, bash these, get a little health back, and we're gonna go into a cutscene. Now this is not the uh, Nolan North Prince no. um, that we that we had in the last Prince of Persia, so he's uh, he's got some remarks to say, but they're not quite the uh, the wise ass stuff that we that we heard in the last Prince of Persia game. Hopefully it's not quite the uh, the harsh, over-the-top stuff that we heard from Warrior Within, though, either. No, this is definitely storybook prints. Excellent. Although, that's uh, a little violent, so you, d you definitely get uh, some violence in He's here. definitely on his way to being the hard dude we saw. Absolutely. Now, uh, Kevin, some particulars out of the way while we're, we're battling these guys. It's coming off the Xbox 360, the PlayStation 3, as well as the PC, is that correct? Absolutely. The version you see here um, is coming out for the 360 and the PS3 on May 18th. Um, PC two weeks later on June 1st, but there are also versions for the Wii, the PSP, 
um, and the DS. Excellent. Any uh, any fun business you want to share with us about Prince of Persia, the Forgotten Sands, before we let you go, sir? Absolutely. Um, one thing to look out for, you're going to get the uh, time rewind mechanic uh -huh. from, uh, from the previous games in the Sands of Time series. Um, and that comes a little bit later in the game from here. Um, but what you're also going to get is the ability to, uh, to freeze water. Oh, really? And then uh, jump across that stuff so, uh, and use that to your advantage. So it takes a while before you get that in the game, maybe uh, an hour or two in. Um, but it's definitely worth uh, worth noting worth noting that because it's probably the, the the big thing in this game. At this point, we're just running along walls. We're doing all the stuff you'd expect the prince to do. Um, and as far as I'm concerned, that is a very good thing. Run on, Prince of Persia fans. Definitely be on the lookout for this one, May 18th, Xbox 360, PlayStation 3, and then the PC is in June. As the PC is June 1st, uh, two weeks later. Fantastic. Kevin, pleasure as always. Thank My you pleasure. again. And uh, now we return you back to the show. While Brian and Homer were in New York this week, they also had a chance to interview this year's victim of the Madden, I mean, this year's Madden cover athlete, Drew Brees. Take it away, guys. All right, here we go, baby. Play with confidence, play with swagger. Who that? We that. From the top. One, two, win, three, win, four, win, five, six, six, win, six, seven, eight, win, nine, ten, win, again, 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 win. Again, one, two, three, you know, obviously it's an honor to be on the cover of Madden 11 and uh, kind of extra special because the, the fans voted on it. You know, it's the first year that they've, they've done that and I think there's a lot of really unique features to this game, especially in the intro, you know, talking about New Orleans, showing a lot of uh, uh, great video footage and just, uh, you know, kind of bringing people back to the, to the moment. I, I know that, that the whole Madden curse has kind of taken on a life of its own. It's something that, you know, obviously a lot of people talk about, joke about, but I mean, uh, I think the, f the, the, the fact that matters for, for, for me and for us, you know, fans voted on it. So if the fans wanted me on the cover, then, you know, that's the way it is. But uh, I'll, I'll accept that and I'll embrace it. Um, but listen, I, you know, it's, it's a challenge. You know, if, if, I'm, if, if, if I'm not willing to take on the challenge of being on the cover of Madden, then, uh, you know, cancel the season because obviously there's, uh, there's plenty of tough challenges ahead that I'm going to need to be ready for just like this one. So, you know what, I, I look at it too is, there's still, you know, we still feel like we are very much a team of destiny and that we still have um, a lot that we are going to accomplish. And so we still feel like destiny's on our side and feel like destiny is stronger than any curse. Um, that's the way I look at it. I think the entire country could identify with, with us and our team and our city and all that we've been through. And we just felt like there was a piece of everybody that wanted to see us win. And I think that's why. When people see the cover, it just takes them back to the moment, you know, of New Orleans, the city, the floor of the league, the, the spirit, the passion, and, you know, that's, that's what makes it special. I just told them I want to be able to throw the ball 80 yards. I want to be able to fit it into any window, you know. I want to, you know, every ball that comes out of my hands needs to be a completion, uh, <laughs> you know, all that stuff. I mean, basically, uh, I can't make any mistakes in the game. <laughs> been a lot of good ones, you know. Um, obviously starting with Eddie George, um, you know, all the way up through uh, obviously guys like Donovan McNabb and Brett Favre and um, last year's cover being unique with uh, Larry Fitzgerald and Troy Palomalo. Um, it just continues to be, you know, unique and cutting edge and um, I think that's what's exciting about it. Obviously there's a lot of hype and attention brought to it, you know, every year, who's, who's cover of Madden this year, who's cover of Madden, and it's just because you recognize how many people are fans of the game and how many people play the game, and, you know, and I think that, obviously, because for a lot of people it's as close to the game as you can get, I mean, that's what makes it so exciting. There is a, there's a feature called Game Flow that uh, the game has this year where, basically, you know, I mean, there's... They have, they have people that have studied the game film and, and literally put your actual plays in the, in the plan. And uh, so you, with game flow mode, you basically have the plays called to you according to the situation in the game. So if it's third and long, then basically they're going to take a bunch of plays that they've seen on film, your team run on third and long, and they're going to call one of those plays to you that, you know, so, so in other words, it's as if you are the quarterback in the huddle, getting the play call from the coach, and now you have to execute it. I mean, which, it, it, there's also a feature called game plan where you can 
you can put together a game plan for the game where you pick and choose different plays. You can come up with different game plans for different teams according to who you're playing and maybe what their strengths are and how you can attack them. And so, I mean, it's as, it's as close to the real deal as you're going to get. So Madden Graw 2010, August 10th, uh, is the official launch of the Madden game, Madden 11. And uh, the fact that, you know, we're bringing that down to New Orleans, Madden Graw, you know, in the French Quarter, um, just yet another reason to throw a party in New Orleans, right? Um, certainly that'll be exciting with, you know, the food and the music and just the, the party and the excitement uh, with the launch. But, uh, you know, we'll be in training camp. So obviously I'll be, I'll be working, I'll be, you know, but hey, I'm all for let's work and then let our fans, you know, party and have a good time because obviously that's, that's a big deal. EA Sports, Madden NFL 11, it's in the game. Well guys, it's time for everybody's favorite part of the show. It's trivia giveaway time. On this episode, what we've got are these StarCraft II books, Heaven's Devils. We've got the, the physical copy as well as an audio book if, say, for example, reading's not really your thing. Why do you got to look at me when you're saying that? I didn't mean to imply anything. I'm just, you know, just, you know, saying, throwing it out there. Some people don't know slash like to read. I told you, Sean, I can't help that. <laughs> <laughs> it's not your fault. We don't blame you. Anyways, uh, if you're not like John Carlo and you actually want to read a book, we are going to give away these books if you think you know the answer to our trivia question. That question is this. What former member of the Terran Confederacy became Emperor of the Dominion? You think you know the answer? There's two ways to send it over to us. You either send us an email to onthespot at gamespot.com or you use that little green answer trivia button right on the page here. Well, we've just about reached the end of the episode. John Carlo, you know, what have you learned today? Today I've learned that Sasquatch isn't real. Okay. And that I can read at a fourth grade level. Oh, you kid. Cal is a fine institution. I didn't mean to deride that wonderful, wonderful program and its wonderful, adorable bear mascot. That, that sounded awfully sarcastic. <laughs> no, not even a little bit. But more importantly, what I learned today is that neither one of us is suited to do the intro of the show. Not now, not ever, not at any point in the future should we do that voiceover. So fortunately, we've got an idea brewing where you guys can send us your own intro voiceover. We, uh, we haven't quite figured out all the details, but make sure to stick around for the next few episodes to, to hear the details of that contest. So that's it for this episode. For everybody here at Today on the Spot, I'm Sean McInnes. I'm Giancarlo Veronini. Thanks for watching, everybody. I was serious about the bear. It's cool. It can maul people. All right, everybody. It's time for Jet Rocket. Let's do it. <laughs> hey, do you know anything about Jet Rocket? Neither do I. But you're about to find out. Meanwhile, I'm going to go back to my desk and not find out. <laughs> you win this one, viewers. <laughs>